generative AI, as soon as the word comes nowadays, everybody thinks, oh, it's about chatbot, LLMs, and so on. Uh, but uh, generative AI is much more than that. It's not just specific to a domain. Um, of course, uh, text is the main uh, poster child of generative AI, as we see. And the companies like OpenAI, Cohere, Anthropic, and Google AI are a few companies who are doing amazing products. And everybody knows ChatGPT and Cloud or uh, Snorkel AI and whatever. But uh, if you see the humans deal with a lot of non-text data as well. Um, and that's where a lot of stable diffusion techniques are doing the groundbreaking work. A uh, few of the companies I have listed here in area of image and videos like Stability, uh, Dali2, Firefly, Runway ML, and uh, Google AI uh, doing the image and video solutions. Um, while in field of audio, we have some amazing companies like Eleven Labs, Descript, and of course, Google AI. Um, so landscape of text to image, it's, it's pretty happening uh, at the moment. There are a lot of things which has happened since last, I would say, 18 months. And in last few uh, months and weeks, um, there's amazing amount of innovation happening. Um, so you see that a lot of terms which people throw in discussion when they're talking about stable diffusion, they talk about VAs, clips, glide, daily to mid journey, stable diffusion, image, image in, and many other type of uh, models. Um, so in this slide, what I wanted to give you uh, an idea is stable diffusion is not just the one thing. It's not a one technology. It's not being done by one company or few companies. It is full blown, blown domain now. And uh, one thing we have to realize that the line between image models and the text model has been blurred since uh, I would say January 2021 when the clip model came, uh, clip paper came in. Uh, so clip, in short, you should know that it converts image or text either into a, some Latin form and in that Latin domain, uh, images and text, they can interact with each other to give feedback, to create innovative solutions. And we are going to talk about it. Why stable diffusion matters? So we had many uh, image generation techniques over the course of history. Um, but stable diffusion is the first one which basically tied the text to images, right? Uh, we had we we had been generating different type of images all the anime 3d uh, looking contents over the course of decades but now we have text tied to the uh, concept in the image and th that's when it becomes very fancy and the possibilities of innovations are a lot um and this technique it it's it is partly the maths of stable diffusion is inspired by um uh, fluid mechanics and how the gases diffuse, and that's how the, uh, the word diffusion comes in. Um, and and it, and in in terms of quality, stable diffusion has knocked down every other technique uh, which was there, and it's much better than any of the previous reconstruction mechanism, at least in terms of similar effort and um, scale wise, um, how, how much compute you can use to generate the images. And uh, um, one thing about stable diffusion, which uh, you will need to realize that stable diffusion has amazing edge preservation as an image above. If you see the image is very, it, it has a lot of noisy areas, smooth areas, uh, different lightning conditions and so on. And if you see the reflection of the mountain, it's a, it's a blurry, while the mountain itself is pretty crystal clear. And these are the differentiation where the concept of reflection of, on water is understood by the model itself. And these are like few of the complications which um, a model understands. And uh, we are going to look through how this technique works. Um, and again, um, one thing I wanted you to understand is that throughout all these models, fancy models in the market, DALI2, Imagine, and Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, or whatever, this one technique, which is at the center of all these 
uh, models is uh, called denoising diffusion. And uh, this is the concept from the stable diffusion world where you start generating your images from the um, Gaussian no noising image, uh, noised images. And then you work uh, from there to generate the concept of your text, which you're um, providing. So just keep in mind that uh, reverse diffusion or the denoising of uh, images is basically is the base technique and we're going to see how it works a little bit about the history of stable diffusion that in 2022 there are a lot of models which uh, were coming out like dali 2 from open ai google's image in and mid journey um, and all of them had fantastic result uh, in fact mid journey had pretty artistic and dreamy look and feel uh, it was wonderful um, but one thing which was stopping stable diffusion domain to really take off is uh, all of them were closed source. They None of them released um, their code or model for general public or researchers to uh, evaluate. And uh, uh, there were no way that you can fine tune these models to uh, do something specific to your task. So um, till July, everything was like closed source in this domain, while a lot, lot of research was coming in and so on. Uh, but then in August 22, which is exactly 12 months from now, uh, Stable Diffusion uh, by Stability.ai, they have uh, open sourced their model and uh, that has created a lot of um, uh, wave in the tech community. And uh, the algorithm and the code itself was very simplistic and the challenge was more from the point of view uh, of data uh, and the compute needed to train it. And, and if you see this graph, I'm not sure how readable it is, but uh, all these lines which you see here, these are on the axis. we have number of days and the number of stars on that GitHub repository. You see that it it it, it is okay uh, for and all these are like one of few of the most popular uh, repositories on the GitHub, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Kafka, Spark, whatever. But if you see stable diffusion, it's almost not visible here because it's almost vertical. You see, it's like within like less than two hundred days, it really reached the top of most popular libraries with more than. 30,000 stars, and it's almost like a firework. It seems, and it literally became like popular uh, within a matter of uh, weeks and it took the world by storm. So if you're starting the, your career in this domain or generative AI domain, regardless text or image or audio, whatever, uh, you have to know stable diffusion has fundamentally enabled researchers to accelerate their work and it has really created a boom in uh, text to image technologies. Uh, in fact, a lot of text-based work um, which is being developed in parallel, in tandem with stable diffusion image technologies. So we're going to see. Uh, so I just wanted to explain that it, it really matters a lot in the research community at the, at the moment. And uh, though the concept is profound, the code is not very complex. It, it's pretty simplistic. You will see a lot of them. Um, and here's the intuition behind stable diffusion. If you have not seen this previously, it's okay. Uh, the dream booth, when I will explain it, it just requires a little bit of understanding of this one. Uh, but because dream booth is nothing but a stable diffusion with your own images, uh, which we'll see in a bit. Uh, but what basically it does, it takes your text prompts and it converts it into some canonical Latin form. And uh, it takes some form of image, uh, any noisy image or partially noisy image. And on the basis of the text encoded, it has a model which can predict the noise in the current image. And you take that noise and subtract from the current noisy image. And then you find an image which is a little bit less noisy. And you keep repeating this process again and again until uh, you think that you've got the image which matches the concept in a text. So this type of generation is called uh, text condition, reverse diffusion generation of image. Uh, so I know this is a lot of mumbo jumbo, but what basically it means, um, you uh, 
basically find, estimate the noise in current image and reduce that noise. So the image you will have after one iteration is basically altered noisy image looks like a little bit more like description as in text. Uh, so it reduces that. So this is the intuition. What basically it means that you take the text and you estimate the noise in the current image and you reduce that, literally subtract that noise from the current image to find the less noisy images. Uh, yeah, so there is another intuition slide here. Uh, if I say the word boy uh, and, and, and I ask the system to generate an image and suppose it generates the image on the right, um, as a human, you can tell what is wrong in this image. Uh, so you'll say that ears are not correct and the head part is little shrunk. So what is happening in your mind when I say the text boy, it, it triggers that these are the parts which needs change. In other words, when I say boy, noise is in the ears area and the head area. And that's the base intuition of the TAS, a stable diffusion model. Uh, in the field of stable diffusion, what will happen, the actual model, it does it finds the which pixels have what amount of noise. So it doesn't happen like area wise, it will happen, happen literally by the pixel wise. And that we um, reduce that, uh, subtract that noise from those pixels. And that's how we do again and again. And that's how uh, stable diffusion is able to generate. This is just to give you an idea how the algorithm works. Um, when you have some text, you'll be able to know uh, which areas have noise and needs to uh, be changed or something. Um, so, yeah, so it's, when you're trying to do the stable diffusion, what basically you do, as I was explaining, you calculate the noise, you remove the noise and repeat. So just remember these terms, CRR, which, which basically means calculate the noise, reduce the noise and re repeat. Uh, and that's what we do in stable diffusion. Uh, you see this uh, block here, unit. Uh, when you say you're training a stable diffusion model, uh, of course, there is a, a text encoder model which converts text into Latin form. Uh, there is a, a network which basically predicts the noise from the current noisy images. And you take that noise, subtract from the base uh, input image, and you find denoised image. And, and we do again this process again and again. Um, and, and what happens, you don't, it's not possible to do calculation of the noise all in one shot. Um, uh, you have to do in uh, smaller steps. Uh, big, the, that's where the term stable comes from. Stable diffusion means you, it means you do a little bit change and then you again rerun the process to find the noise as per your tech condition in text or the input prompt. Um, uh, so it's not possible to change the whole image in one step. Uh, you do a little bit uh, and uh, you keep repeating this process and that's where the term uh, stable comes in. You if you try to do the bigger step and try to uh, find the noise in all in one step, um, first of all, uh, it it will not have that great of quality. And other thing is, uh, it might introduce the instability where it will never converge to the concept of the text. So this is all three slides which I've shown. It's just to build your intuition. You don't necessarily have to remember the maps, but the intuition is uh, first thing to grab before you grab the mathematical uh, equations, which are pretty dry, but uh, of course they let you build the exactly same intuition uh, which I'm explaining. Little bit about how do we train uh, the stable diffusion models. Uh, as I was telling, there is a network which predicts the noise. Um, and to train such a network, what happens? You have when you train that network, you have to know how much noise the current noisy image has. So you can calculate some loss function on the output of the network being unit being trained. And uh, this way that network will become smarter after many epochs uh, to predict the noise in the current image. Uh, and that's what this orange braces you see at the top are doing. They are basically uh, giving various uh, noised images uh, where you know the exact amount of noise added. Uh, noise is basically nothing but a sigma and mu of the distribution. Uh, that's how you introduce the noise. Uh, 
if if you have experience with the Gaussian uh, filters, you will know what I mean. But basically, it makes some uh, noised version of image and give the input and um, um, whatever output network unit gives, it just uh, compares with the known amount of uh, noise. And then th it does the back propagation. We keep doing that. And that's how the unit become trained where it can predict the noise. And then at the inference time, and the blue braces, which you see here, basically it will take the image and unit will predict the noise and you can reduce that noise to denoise it. It happens in multiple steps just for the sake of simplicity. I've done one step. Uh, and this process, uh, the, the main algorithm, the uh, is called the DDPM, which is Denoising Diffusion Probabilistic Model. Um, and this is a wonderful paper, which was uh, pretty seminal in this domain. Uh, okay, so now I want to you to uh, show you some hands-on experience. And uh, let's see what's happening. You can go here, click that, and I copied the first example, and I generated. Um, okay, I, I generated because today is the Indian festival called Raki. So I just use this prompt where robot is wearing a Rocky. So I have given the prompt a robot's wrist wearing very colorful Rocky, HD photorealistic um, close up, just hand wrist zoom, palm down, whatever. So you see it is able to understand and that's the basic stable diffusion um, which uh, happens uh, and everybody knows that you might have seen a lot of uh, examples and Adobe Firefly is a pretty amazing in sense you can change the parameters like you want photorealistic or whatnot um, and and most of the time at least one out of four images is uh, good enough to do your thing if not you can always click on refresh and it will generate that thing. Uh, uh, one thing you have to uh, be mindful here is that uh, see the clarity of these images is pretty mind boggling, right? You see the reflection of the light on the gradient uh, on the slant surface of the this robot looking hand. Um, that's pretty awesome. You see the reflection of light. So that's where stable diffusion technique uh, surpasses any other technique. Um, another thing is that it has a camera-like features like where this is zoomed out, blurred, this is in focus, and the background is focused. Uh, again, even this, you see the focus between all the fingers are different, and that's the power of stable diffusion, um, which needs to be realized because uh, it's amazing how, uh, how much understanding it can introduce just in one thing. So just uh, let's try the second example, um, which is this one. And let's see what we get. Uh, a young boy reading a book, very focused, happy. Let's see what it generates. Okay, so it has generated. And uh, you can see that, right? Uh, it, it did generate what I asked it, uh, but let's see the next example. Uh, suppose I want to generate an Indian young boy reading a book, very focused, happy, whatever. So let me do that. Okay, so now it has created somewhat real looking uh, photorealistic images of uh, Indian kid who's reading a book or whatever. Um, so let's go back to our presentation. This was the quick demo and let's start from there. We did that, but what is wrong here? Let me explain. So though we are able to generate the concept which we are writing for, um, but uh, we have less control and customization to the type of image we want to generate. Uh, specifically, if I want to generate uh, some particular artifact uh, or somebody uh, specific, it's very hard to do until that person is very famous. For example, if I want to generate um, images of some particular person doing something, um, then the off-the-shelf uh, stable diffusion models won't help you. You have to fine-tune, and that's where uh, the fine-tuning of uh, stable diffusion models is very viable. Uh, and Dream Booth is the paper which basically has enabled it and made it very easy to do it. Uh, and I will show you how to do it uh, in a bit. 
Um, and this is the paper. I hope you are able to see my screen. Um, I have provided the archive link. You must download this paper. Um, if you have never opened archive, it's a basically a, a papers repository. You can go and on the right side, you'll have a PDF link. You click on that, you will it will open the PDF, uh, the top of that PDF uh, I'm explaining. And let me uh, talk about a little bit here. So first of all, realize that this paper came in mid-March of uh, 2023. So it's not very old paper, but it, it has really taken the world by its storm um, because this was the piece which was missing uh, because everybody knew that uh, stable diffusion is great, it works, I can generate images, but I can't purpose it for my use cases, especially in an enterprise setting or professional setting or even in personal setting, uh, we can't do that. And that's where this paper has really uh, fill the gap which was needed for a stable diffusion diffusions mass adopt adoption uh, so what dream booth is basically uh, as we have been talking uh, suppose and this image i have taken from the paper itself you can check it out what basically means suppose i have images of my dog uh, and i want i, I fine tune the uh, stable diffusion model using dream booth uh, to learn the concept of my dog's images. And then I can type, um, I'm, I can generate images for um, my uh, dog in various settings like in Greece or Italy or underwater, sleeping in bucket, dog house or getting haircut or anything. And this is what is needed. Everybody needs to be able to uh, overfit their um, own custom images um, to uh, and use uh, for the purpose at hand. Um, as you can see, um, um, fine tuning uh, text to image diffusion model for subject driven generation is what we really need. And we are going to, to learn today how to do that. We'll learn a concept, but we, I really want you to be able to generate custom images of your objects, your concepts after this talk. And that's what we're going to do. Um, but I highly recommend go to this archive link and download the paper and uh, um, read out. Uh, just scroll through it. Even if you're not reading, you'll see the amazing power. Uh, it is amazing. It still amazes me. It's been a few months. So, so, um, so in simple words, Dreamboot can be used to put your concept in stable diffusion models by fine tuning pre-trained stable diffusion models. So you have to understand that Dreamboot technique, it's basically taking a stable diffusion model and uh, training it a little bit more um, to uh, your custom concept. What differentiates um, Dreamboot is that you don't really need the uh, million, billion, images to fine tune it. It's basically um, 10 or 20 images can do the trick for you, which we are going to do in this uh, uh, demo. Um, and few of the use cases which I've seen uh, Rimbo getting used for uh, creating personalized images of people, animals, objects, uh, generating images of people in different scene poses, views, um, creating art, images for commercial purposes, and uh, researching the capability of deep learning models. For example, if you want to see what deep learning model can really do, um, can it be used in this domain versus that domain? Um, uh, Dreamboat is really enabling this experimentation at hyperscale and uh, at lightning speed. Um, so uh, basically, uh, we're going to learn how to achieve fine tuning of pre-trained stable diffusion model. And that's what Dream Booth enables you to do. Um, 